Welcome back, folks, to Let's Me Play Albion. And when last we left off, we're looking for Cassotto in the Equipment Makers Guild basement in Amajo. Cassotto has the secret of metal magic that we need to try and save Albion. Bearing in mind, all of the effort we spent in Kamulon looking for the high knowledge may be in vain, as there's not a guarantee that the plan we're enacting will succeed in destroying the Toronto. After all, the people of Albion have never faced a threat like the Toronto before, so they don't have a guaranteed way of taking care of it. We kind of made a bit of a gaffe before when exploring the areas up down this corridor. When we go around this corner, there'll be a split in the path where we can go either east or west, and we went west first. That is a significant mistake, because we don't have the item that we need to do anything down here of any significance. We can solve one puzzle that I did have the solution to in my inventory, the bucket, but I didn't think about using it then. Of course I thought about it after the recording, but we'll do that when we go back in that direction. But before we go and get the item we need down here, we're going to have a look at Siobhan, because we didn't have a look at any of her statistics when we initially added her into the party after getting rid of Thunag. We'll remove the power amulet here just to get a more accurate reading on her strength. Siobhan is a 29-year-old Mahino warrior, and is currently level 8. She wasn't level 8 when she joined the party, but I can't account for all the levels that we've gained while we've been fighting things on our way into this part of Amajo. She has 65 out of 40 life points, the extra 25 are from the power amulet, and it's nice that they're added on here and don't get taken away. Imagine if you took this off and then put it on and then you were down 25 life points, that could kill you at the lower levels. She has 4 training points, she started with a lot more, and she currently has 2,134 experience points. I mean, if you compare that to Tom, who has 33,682, that is a substantial difference in level. I don't think Siobhan will ever really be catching up unless we take some very drastic measures. Siobhan has quite a nice array of statistics here. She has 60 out of 90 strength, which is brilliant for a warrior, 45 out of 80 intelligence, and 50 out of 70 dexterity, again, really good for a warrior. Although speed is capped at 50 without magic items, uh, 45 out of 50 is very impressive, and 50 out of 75 stamina is also very impressive. 10 out of 25 luck is a little below average, and 5 out of 20 magic resistance is nothing to, uh, nothing to shake your head at, although I imagine uh, some of that might be from items. Actually, I don't think any of it's from items. Never mind! She just has 5 out of 20 magic resistance, and 0 out of 35 magic talent. She has the potential to gain 99 close range combat skill, which is fantastic, and the potential to gain 99 long range combat skill. Siobhan can be whatever kind of warrior you need her to be. If you want her to use bows or the uh, bolt rifle, fair enough, she can do that. If you want her to use swords, she can do that too, and she is one of the best characters to use the uh, Gaze of Kamulos, which Tom is currently using. She has 4 out of 9 critical hit training, and only 5 out of 20 lock picking. You're not really going to be relying on her to lock pick anything, but that is to be expected. And she can only speak Celtic. Currently she's here in the combat, but that is uh, irrelevant to her attributes. And uh, one more thing you want to uh, comment on is that she has a base of 4 damage, even when she doesn't have a weapon equipped, which I think is to uh, compensate for the fact that Siobhan can't equip an item in a prehensile tail, because she doesn't have a prehensile tail. Alright, now that we've had a look at that, we're now going to talk to Siobhan, because we haven't actually talked about any of the things like her past, or what she likes doing, or anything. And that is all here. Tom, what's up? What have you been doing up to now? If you would like to know something about my training, I had a classical warrior training with Garrett. I spent my younger years there, and learned a great deal. Then I traveled with my father for a long time, when it is hunting season, he often spends ages riding around to get supplies. Finally, I took off on my own. I learned to take care of myself. I met human beings and other races, new cities and towns and foreign cultures. But I must admit, during this entire time I never left the continent of Maine. And now I've joined you. Who is Garrod? Well, we've already met Garrod, actually. My old teacher? He is excellent. I really recommend him. His speciality is critical hits. What only very few know is that he still gives lessons. If you're interested, you can meet him at the tavern in Kurnos every morning between 8 and 9 o'clock. And you best bring a whole heap of gold coins with you. 
He demands very high prices, and you can't haggle with him. If you don't go to Kurnos and learn this from the people living there, Shafor is a good way to find out if you have her in your party. Do you come from Belovano? Yes, I was born and raised in Belovano. I do like it there, but I would like to see more in my life than just my home city. Would you like to keep travelling around here? I really haven't thought about it too much. Who knows how everything will turn out when I'm older. For the moment, I don't want to think about it. And I'm also much too adventurous to have a normal profession. I can't imagine always living in one place. But as I said, that can all change with time. Indeed, time does change people. And that will get rid of Siobhan if you want to, but we don't want to right now. Do you like it with us? I've liked it up to now. I can't complain. Siobhan really doesn't have a lot of backstory, and that's quite a pity, but then again, she is added quite late, and uh, she is a very optional character. Thank you, that's all for now. And there isn't even a see you, Tom, afterwards. So we're going to go and fight this brog here. But it's not just one, it's six brog. Uh, five brog three, and a brog two. And we can quite easily take care of this with a frost avalanche, and a few melee attacks, and a ranged attack or two from Harriet. We'll have you attack that one over there. Melthus just stay there, just in case we get a demon or two that we need to fight. And this encounter is pretty much over. We need to go and get an item from a treasure chest that is uh, over a little bit further to the east of uh, where we fi we're fighting these uh, Brog. There we go. And I think these are about to perish. You're gone, and you're not gone yet. Actually, we only got rid of one of them, which is quite a surprise. Yeah, I think maybe a fireball might help speed this up a bit, because eventually these enemies will unfreeze, and that will be bad. Goodbye, Brog over there. The amount of damage from the uh, Frost Avalanche will help in softening them up. And I think that one might be gone too. No, that one is still alive. We'll just move forward and deal with these now. A few attacks here, and one attack there. All we need are melee attacks. Now, you might as well not do anything, Melthus. You should just preserve your uh, spell points. Not that you really need to, because we can uh, easily regenerate them by resting or by using recuperation. And Harriet is now level 27, which is really good. And once more, we're given the option of carrying rocks with us, which we're going to say no to. Here is a chest that would have been surrounded by the uh, spikes if we hadn't got rid of them. And in here are two lockpicks, a small amount of gold, and more importantly, yet another vital item that we can't get rid of. The chest key, that unlocks the chest in the large area that we were in before, or very close to at least. We're going to backtrack a bit and head in that direction, and I think we might all be tired or getting tired very soon. There's one way to find out. We were indeed quite tired, and so now we have all of those spell points that we spent back for absolutely nothing. Marvellous. Once we have the key that's in the chest over here, we'll be making a fair bit more progress, and we might even make progress with the, um, and there's the sound of Warnakes that aren't here. Who knows where that sound originates from? Maybe it's a trap made by the equipment makers. We have the key here, so we'll just unlock this, and in here, is yet another key. This is a little bit of busy work if you ask me, getting a key to go and get a key. It might have been better if it hadn't been set up this way, but it does force you to explore everywhere where you go. There we go, heading over here, and this time we're going to go back to the west area and go and solve a puzzle that I really should have solved the first time around, involving the fire and those uh, plates that I could step on but I didn't actually know the route to do so. There is a way to reveal the route, and it does involve the fire and the bucket. I did remember, actually, uh, initially that you needed a bucket, I just didn't remember what for. And now I do. So off we go, Tom! At least doing it uh, this way around means there are no enemies that we have to fight while we're doing this, which is advantageous. Down the corridor, to a puzzle, which will then lead to another puzzle and then even more puzzles. The difference between the uh, the metal maker knowledge and the uh, high knowledge is that you really don't need to spend very long in a Majo if you know exactly what you're doing. You can find Kasoto quite quickly if you get past this initial area and know precisely the correct route to where he is. And if you have the uh, right information to give to him, because he will want something, he's not just going to give us the knowledge. If you have the right information to give him, you can just get the uh, secrets of metal magic, and then you can head back to Jacantos. What we want to do here is we actually want to extinguish 
the fire. The fire is gone, and now we know where we're going. Unfortunately, we can't see where we're going, so we're going to use a light spell here, and this uh, route is still illuminated very slightly. We want to move over here, and then this way, up here. You want to very lightly tap to make sure you don't move too far. There we go, all the way up to the wall there. You could guess this, I imagine, but it would take a lot of trial and error. Pressing onto this here reveals a treasure chest that is already open. And in here is only loot. But hey, we're not going to say no to free stuff. Free stuff is awesome. A ring here, and a ring here. And now we can just walk this way. Because we don't really need to uh, deal with that anymore. And onwards we go. When we get a little bit further away, the light will return. Which is handy. If you didn't illuminate the way with either a torch or a light spell, you'd be fumbling around in the dark for a very long time. What we now want to do is we want to find a direction. I think we want to go this way now. Going this way is important because we need to find something that will open with... Uh, there it is. This door that we couldn't open before. We're going to use that key that we got that I think Jero is holding on to. There we go. And in here is a puzzle that unfortunately we can't solve even if we want to right now. We need to wait very patiently. 8 to 11. That is not a uh, clue to a puzzle that we need to solve in here by doing anything. We literally just need to wait. That is probably why there are stools here, and it's a large area that you can just relax and uh, take in the scenery. Because we need to wait until it's 8 o'clock. When it's 8 o'clock, a switch will appear. And then we can pull that switch and move on to the next puzzle. So really we just need to wait. There are no enemies for us to fight. There's nothing really for us to do, but just let the hours tick by. Which I imagine is the reason why this area is an overhead location, and not an area where you uh, have the 3D dungeon. Because time travels really slowly in the 3D dungeon. We could rest, actually. There we go. Now it is nearly 8 o'clock. And there should be... There it is! One switch. We have now pulled the switch, and I have no idea what that actually does. It might open the area that we were in before, rather than we tried to get into before. Let's have a look, shall we? We'll head back this way, and head north, and hope that the uh, door is open. The one that wouldn't open before, no matter what we tried. It would make sense that it would open to the uh, switch that only appears for a few hours every day. And no, we still don't need that broom that's over there, so we'll leave that be. We're going to be heading to another 3D dungeon again, but this one I think is remarkably uh, smaller than Kamulon. Well, anything in this game is uh, smaller than Kamulon. It wouldn't take that much effort. I don't remember if we want to go south or north. We're going to go south first and uh, see if there's anything down here of any importance. There might be. You never know. I might have missed something. Like, for instance, there might be a room nearby, like this one. I think I might have already pulled this switch, though. I think I did. But it's always worth checking, just in case. And in here is a resounding amount of not very much, and I don't think I did pull this switch. Maybe it was the uh, switch which was a uh, time-based that opened this door that will then allow me to go to the other area, which was uh, previously uh, inaccessible. See what I mean about uh, things leading from one to another with keys that um, access keys and then doors that access switches that access other doors? It's all sort of linked together. And I may not have previously said that I actually, um, that I actually um, stated that, but I have stated it now. And the door is open. And over here is a selection of spikes that we don't need to worry about and a mine shaft that will lead to a 3D dungeon where there immediately are enemies that we need to worry about. We need to be very careful in here. Tom says, I've no idea why that's there. We won't get very far this way. He points at the ground. Now it becomes obvious to the others that the track stops right at the entrance. However, the tunnel is easily accessible on foot. Did we actually ride the minecart into here? Maybe we did. Okay, time to do a ho ho! And now we'll move on. There are enemies somewhere in here. Oh, there are a lot of enemies in here. Hello, how are you? We're going to ignore you, and we're going to go this way instead. Down here are probably going to be even more enemies, and I don't think we want to uh, pay attention to that door over there. 
we need to go a very particular route if we want to find uh, Kosoko. What is over here? A lot of enemies that we're probably going to ignore. Hello you! How are you? You are a selection of enemies who are all Fear 3s. You're all Fear 3s, actually. We need to make sure that you don't go anywhere. And we'll just launch some attacks here, here, and here. We could actually try a Banish Demons here and get that a little bit higher level. It won't work, but we might as well try it. There we go. These enemies won't be going anywhere, so we have all the time in the world to take care of them. And that is still a lot of damage. 27. That would kill some enemies in uh, Jiradar, just kill them stone dead. And I think these fears have a lot to fear from us, and uh, that didn't work, I'm not surprised that completely failed. But every casting will help that little bit more in getting that to a maximum level. We can use that to get rid of large amount of Animal 3s if they'll stay still, or if we can guess where they'll go. I don't think we need another uh, Frost Avalanche here, we just want a few uh, more crystal throwing axes thrown everywhere. There we go, much better. And only two of them hit, but that fear is gone, and that one is still there, and that one is still there. But every casting does help. And that one is gone too. Moving forward here, we'll cast once again a Banished Demons. There we go, at least we're not having any sound problems with that spell, eh? And then we'll have some uh, ranged attacks there and there. Actually, maybe we want them there, so that uh, if we move forward we can have some melee attacks aimed at the Fear 3 that's right next to Siobhan and Tom. One, two, three, and four, and that one is still standing, but probably not for much longer. And that failed, and that failed completely. Ah well, and it's still there as well. Advancing forward, I don't think we need to do any more uh, Banished Demons, we might as well preserve the uh, spell points of Malthus, and a few more attacks that uh, have to be re-aimed or else they'll miss. And goodbye Fear 3! And goodbye Fear 3 over here! Aha! 166 experience points and uh, 31! That is quite a high level and still only one attack around, unfortunately. I think we need to go this way and there aren't any enemies visible whatsoever. There is a massive shield on the wall, however. We can't take that, unfortunately. Let's move up here. Any doors that we can open? Are there any enemies we need to worry about is probably a more accurate question. There's a door here that's closed that I imagine will not open. No, it won't. I think we're in the, uh, we're heading in the right direction if we want to go and find uh, Kosato. That one won't open either. This one will open. Is this where he is? I don't remember. It might not be, for all I know, this could be completely the wrong direction. There's only one way to find out. I thought that that uh, bit of blue there was the eyes of an enemy, but I was mistaken. Anything in here? It would seem at the moment, no. Except a long corridor that's leading absolutely nowhere. I think that's an enemy encounter heading our way. Yes, indeed it is. Hello! Oh, that is a lot of enemies! A lot of enemies indeed! I think a Frost Avalanche here is essential, or else we're going to lose very quickly. This area really is a, a huge dungeon that's mostly optional. If you know exactly where you're going, you can just ignore everything and uh, go straight to where the uh, person you need to find is. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly where that is, or rather I don't know where that is, Tom definitely doesn't know where that is, and so we're going to find a lot of encounters that we have to take care of. Like this one for instance. But that's okay, because there'll most certainly be lots of loot around as well. And Siobhan could do with a level or two, well everyone could do with a level or two, it's always good to gain experience and levels. There we go, all these enemies won't be going anywhere apart from being obliterated. Most likely not by Malthus, but hey, maybe by Malthus. Let's see how these melee attacks do. There's a- well, there's one gone, and they're not going to be disappearing anytime soon. We'll need to have Malthus drink one of those potions to make sure that uh, he can keep casting that spell. We really want him to learn how to use the uh, the better spell, which is uh, Demon Exodus. But that one consumes a lot of spell points, we could cast another one. It will only consume uh, 20 life points, and we can easily heal that uh, later. Alright, a few attacks here and here. We definitely will need to cast another uh, Frost Avalanche later. Is that one going to die? 
Maybe. No, and there's one dead, purely from a single melee attack. It might have been a critical hit, but then again I didn't notice. It could very well have just been uh, someone hitting very hard. And we're going to have to move forward because there's a large area of nothing. And now there are loads more enemies for us to take care of. I think maybe drinking one of those potions is a good idea now. You're holding on to all of them, so you'll just drink a violet one here. Excellent. That is at least a couple more castings. We'll uh, save the red one for now. Another violet one may do the trick. And now you can cast far more. Far more indeed. I think three, that's actually not many more. Compared to Banish Demon, which we have eight of, Demon Exodus is two, and that consumes 70 spell points. Imagine if you didn't have that um, Collar of Danu. The sheer amount of uh, spell points that gives uh, Melthus makes him really useful indeed. I think we'll focus on this one right now, just to get rid of the uh, front row more effectively. Melthus could be using fireballs, but every casting will make it that much more likely. Also, that was a lot of uh, ranged attacks that missed completely. And once again, the fears do not care for our castings whatsoever. They will do one day. Today, however, is not that day. But hey, at least we're not going to be uh, going back into Kamulon after this encounter is over, seeing once more the grey drab environs of that area. We will deal with this encounter eventually. Pretty soon, actually, I think. Uh, we'll have to deal with the, uh, the back line of fears there. That one should be gone pretty soon. And they're still resisting the spell. It's pretty much uh, they either completely resist it or they just die. And the final one there? We probably got quite a lot of experience with it, though. Maybe... Uh-oh. We need to use another Frost Avalanche here, most certainly. There we go, and do that again. Why not? It can't hurt. And, uh... I think an attack in that direction against that one will be good. There we go. This might kill that one, considering how much damage it's taken. And 27 damage will weaken these ones so that Drur and Tom and Siobhan can finish them off. It's a shame that they can't really act faster, because they, we never really got to see... Well, there we go, that one is now gone. We never really got to see how capable they were. Occasionally they got some attacks in, but most of the time we just froze them, and then we just melee attacked them to death, which is a shame. If only the game didn't have a large amount of frost magic, eh? But it does, and I'm very glad it does, because that means we can obliterate everything in our path using it. A few attacks there, and one there. You might as well cast the Banished Demon once more. It's already nearly at, um, nearly a third of the way through uh, being maximum proficiency already. That one is gone, which is handy. That one is gone too. That one is still there, and these are still resisting even at a third uh, proficiency. I'm not surprised, really. You need to get it quite high to deal with them. I think we could cast it one more time. I don't actually think they'll live long enough, though, so we'll wait on that. There we go. I don't think that needs to be in that direction. I think this way is better. And is that one gone? That one is not gone yet. That one is gone, though. This one is not gone either. They'll be gone next time, I'm sure. Or maybe they'll hold on, even despite our best efforts. Nope, they are indeed gone. That is a lot of experience, and Siobhan is now level 9, which is excellent. And when we come back, folks, we'll continue looking for Kosato. Apparently there's something very special here, and we might have actually uh, gone in the right direction. Maybe we have inadvertently stumbled across where we need to be. Who knows, eh? And I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.